Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. Today we will be focusing on the case of Tiffany & Co. Tiffany & Co is an American luxury jewellery and specialty retailer and has held one of the leading positions in the fine jewellery industry since 1837. Tiffany & Co rose to prominence after becoming the first American company to win the grand prize for silver craftsmanship at the 1867 Paris World's Fair and established itself as the world's diamond authority by introducing customers to precious gems from around the world. For over 170 years, the name of Tiffany Co has become synonymous with romance, style, quality and luxury and is continuing to expand its consumer market by offering a wide range of luxury goods, such as watches and glassware. This industry is notoriously characterised as tight-lipped, as consumers are buying pieces of jewellery alongside with its associated status and brand recognition. The company's core product, the Tiffany setting, was created over a century ago and has been one of the world's most well-known engagement rings since. Tiffany's association with high-quality diamonds was strengthened in 1886 when the company introduced this product. America's growing upper class began to dominate Tiffany's clientele base as the company's growth in sales volume rose from $7 million in 1914 to $17.7 million in 1919. This component provided a compelling value proposition for consumers as its impeccable design through innovation and craftsmanship has ensured the highest quality standards in diamond products. As a result of this, it provides consumers with a unique post-purchase experience due to its association with product exclusivity, as each product has its own rare appeal and design in order to reflect the consumer's own personal style and luxurious taste. Therefore, by enhancing consumer experience with superior customer service and the offering unique and valuable products, this will leave distinctive emotional benefits such as social approval and personal success. Tiffany & Co is a holding company that operates through other subsidiary companies. These subsidiaries engage in product design, manufacturing and retailing activities. Tiffany's merchandise offerings include an extensive selection of jewellery as well as timepieces, home accessories and fragrances. Tiffany & Co sells its products through a various network of outlets such as department stores, freestanding stores, business to business and wholesale distribution centres. It promotes its brand through catalogues, mass media ads and social media campaigns. Furthermore, the company operates at an international scale, currently functioning all of America, the Asia Pacific region and also all of Europe. Lastly, Tiffany & Co has a significant corporate social responsibility commitment, such as supporting wildlife conservation networks by establishing a Tiffany Save the World Foundation in which it donates 100% of its profits. To date, the company has donated more than 8 million USD dollars. In 2017, Tiffany & Co terminated their chief executive hours before the launch of their Super Bowl commercial starring Lady Gaga. Their chief executive at the time, having been placed in charge of the year prior, was failing to turn the business around from a major decline in sales. Many, many critics of Tiffany & Co have attributed their recent demise to not understanding their own brand image which has therefore deteriorated consumers' perceptions of the brand. Having tried to rebrand their product to younger millennials by using a more modern brand ambassador, the article critiques Tiffany & Co for choosing a more rebellious brand endorser, as Lady Gaga is being compared to Tiffany's previous celebrity endorser, Audrey Hepburn, as she represents a more modest and traditional image for the brand. Tiffany & Co categorises its target market based on various demographic, psychographic and behavioural characteristics. Its major target segment comprises high net worth women between the ages of 28 to 54 and is described as having moderate to high brand loyalty, valuing practicality, reliability and quality products. Furthermore, email marketing is an effective communication channel for targeting this customer segment. More recently, Tiffany & Co has tried to reposition its brand to appeal to a younger demographic consisting of Generation Z and Millennial shoppers. This customer segment is described as having low to moderate brand loyalty and values novelty, authenticity and products with great value for money. This target market also attaches great importance to the experiences that a brand can provide rather than the product itself. Furthermore, social media and word of mouth marketing are, are effective communication channels for targeting this consumer demographic. Currently, the industry has low market share concentration, with the largest players accounting for less than 40% of industry revenue in 2020. Some of these competitors have been very successful due to their ability to define a clear market position, provide attractive product offerings, and create successful marketing strategies. As I mentioned, this industry is highly fragmented, as the major players within the jewellery industry only constitute 36.8% of the market. 
More than half of the industry consists of small businesses who employ fewer than 20 people. And in contrast to the large players' extensive marketing campaigns to increase brand recognition, these small businesses often focus on local markets. However, all Australian retailers have faced competition from online-only operators and the multi-channel operations of international firms. As a result of the wide range of price brackets Tiffany & Co's products fall into, their major competitors span from international brands such as Cartier, Pandora, and Australian large retailers Prouds and Michael Hill, to smaller online companies such as Majuri. Cartier has developed an exclusive brand image and targets high-end luxury customers, while Pandora is known for their customizable charm bracelets, through which they create lifetime customers. Prouds and Michael Hill are both established names within the Australian market and operate retail stores that feel welcoming for all types of customers. Majuri is unique in their approach to design fine jewellery for everyday wear, and they release new designs on a weekly basis. Each of these companies has clearly identified their target customers, and their marketing strategies are designed to provide irresistible products with the appropriate promotion, pricing and distribution. Porter's five forces are useful to understand the competitiveness of Tiffany & Co in their business environment. Through analysing these forces, Tiffany & Co can develop the strategy to gain an advantage over others in the jewellery industry, which ultimately maximises their profit. The luxury jewellery industry is very competitive. The companies we have mentioned have slid at Tiffany & Co's market share, and they have the ability to be more profitable if they can better adapt and innovate according to consumer trends. It is becoming common for jewellery to be sold over the internet, leaving more options for people to buy luxury jewellery. This means Tiffany & Co has less influence in the industry for prices and maintaining brand loyalty. The potential for entrance into the jewellery industry is very low due to its high entry costs and the difficulty in differentiating products from others. Tiffany & Co and many other brands are already well established with their own customer bases, which small retailers just cannot match. This means Tiffany & Co can focus on innovation to differentiate their products from competitors, because they're in a safe position from new entrants. The power of suppliers is moderate, as there is a large amount of supplies for raw materials. However, suppliers of raw materials such as diamonds do not need to contend with other industries of who to supply the materials to. Also, jewellery has a specific craftsmanship leading to less options available. This means Tiffany & Co has less power over pricing and may find it difficult to obtain economies of scale. Customers have a very low power to bargain pricing of luxury jewellery due to the focus being on quality and being premium rather than prices. However, since there is minimal switching costs involved, customers do not have to be loyal to specific brands that can freely choose between companies other than Tiffany & Co. Therefore, Tiffany & Co should focus on, on brand recognition and building a customer base. There is little room for substituted products of luxury jewellery as it serves a very specific purpose. For example, most propellers nowadays they require expensive rings and society has not found a substitute to propose in any other way. Therefore, the demand for jewellery will be maintained, making this force a very low impact. Because of this, there is no limit to the profitability of Tiffany & Co. What are the strengths of Tiffany & Co? Well, within their marketing capabilities, they have retained strong pricing power, meaning increases in prices don't typically impact demand. This is a strength due to Tiffany & Co being able to successfully counteract fluctuations in costs for raw materials. In addition, they have an extensive advertising budget. In 2019, they spent $380 million US million on advertising globally. Within their unique brand positioning, they have a recognisable brand image when it comes to packaging their products, utilising their blue box and blue bags which are synonymous with luxury. They also have a strong brand history. Founded in 1837, they depict themselves as traditional jewellers with a long history for making jewellery, garnering a sense of trust and knowledge when it comes to jewellery. They also have plenty of current innovations, whether it be partnering with celebrated designers like Margaret Chang, who encapsulates the current movement of modern minimal minimalism, or innovating with a team of jewellers, CAD designers, model makers and engineers to think tank new jewellery products within their jewellery design and innovation workshop. Furthermore, they have a strong focus on sustainability, which encompasses sustainable buildings, environmental advocacy, sourcing their packaging from sustainable suppliers, through to even achieving 80% renewable sources of energy in 2018. Thus, Tiffany & Co have countless strengths, which has gotten them to where they are today. In terms of internal problems, Tiffany & Co's board of directors and shareholders have been in conflict with the CEO, Frederick Caminnell. The board of directors had different views and directions to where they wanted the company to advance towards. As a result, clashes and tension arose between board members, and consequently, Caminnell was voted out of the board after the declining performance of Tiffany & Co. Previously, Tiffany's shares sank between $60, but since this decision, shares are now trading nearly 17% more than before at above $90. Another internal issue Tiffany faces 
is the declining brand exclusivity in the reputation resulting from their offerings of a wide range of prices and styles. They sell high and low end offerings, hurting the aura of exclusivity of the luxury brand. This was demonstrated by 45% of their sales coming from jewelry categories with an average price of $350 or less, showing a significant amount of sales being from their low end offerings. Additionally, Tiffany & Co styles have not changed much over the years as they are still selling product lines introduced in the 1960s, while current consumer trends and purchases are driven by newness and fresh styles. A significant market threat has been the emerging number of competitors, specifically Pandora. Pandora's signature customizable charm bracelets create loyal, repeat customers with the incentive of shoppers to return again in collecting more charms. The signature bracelet accounts for 80% of their sales and is a specialized product for Pandora that is affordable yet has an upscaled look. This affordable product directly competes with Tiffany & Co's low-end offerings, but the incentive to return and purchase again is stronger with Pandora. Pandora's immense range with more than 800 charms provides consumers with an enormous choice for personal design to express and customize their bracelets aligning with their personality and values, which are unique to each individual. Pandora also frequently releases licensed collections and collaborations appealing to consumers of different markets. Additionally, the consumer trend for new styles is satisfied by Pandora as they release new collections seven times a year, spaced less than two months apart, while Tiffany & Co can have two or more years elapsed between launches of new collections. We have two potential recommendations that we believe will combat these issues returning Tiffany & Co to their former success. Our first recommendation is to release a secret collection in partnership with an Australian art gallery. While in America, Tiffany & Co do sponsor a biennial exhibition at the Whitney Museum of American Art, this has done little to address their specific issues of outdated styles, lack of innovation, and the allure of beautiful jewellery is somewhat lost in the confusion of contemporary art. Through our recommendation, Tiffany & Co should form a partnership with an Australian gallery, and together, the collection they release would be inspired by the secrets found within classical artworks. Our second recommendation is to work with an ambassador to represent Tiffany & Co at the Met Gala, while sharing the behind the scenes of the entire creative process with a social media audience. The emphasis of this project should be less on the jewellery itself and more on Tiffany & Co as a brand, highlighting their design process and so showcasing their innovation in creating a unique style for the ambassador. As the Met Gala is a much-loved celebration of fashion and highly exclusive event, Tiffany & Co will be able to reposition themselves as an exclusive luxury brand whilst increasing brand awareness with their target customers. After the gala, Tiffany & Co may release a collection inspired by the gala pieces. This strategy directly combats their current lack of exclusivity, innovation and the need to release new styles. We believe that through these recommendations, Tiffany & Co will be able to combat their issues, returning to their former success. Thank you very much for listening.